Welcome to Comparative VPN YouTube channel. Today's video will be an in-depth review of Kaspersky VPN. Kaspersky Antivirus is for many the best antivirus software you can get and this Russian company made sure that it stays that way for more than two decades. This company represents a powerhouse of computer security and with multiple products, antivirus and online security, it cemented its position on the market as the leader. However, recently Kaspersky introduced a new product to its roster of applications and it's no other than Kaspersky VPN, which promises rock-solid security, fast connections, unlimited bandwidth and borderless internet. But is this virtual private network any good and should you actually go ahead and buy it? Well, in this Kaspersky VPN review and test, we aim to answer these and many other questions related to this VPN, but also give you two alternatives that are much better in every way. As always, before we do that, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to be notified whenever we publish new VPN reviews like this. Let's start our Kaspersky VPN review by talking about applications and these reviews. Kaspersky VPN is available on Windows, iOS, Android and Mac OS, so it's a pretty standard setup. This means that you can't install it on your Amazon Fire TV, router or use it as a browser extension, so right from the start Kaspersky VPN fails to impress. What about ease of use? Well, if you take a look at the application, you'll see that it looks quite decent and modern, which I'm always a fan of. You can enable the VPN simply by clicking on this button right here, after which Kaspersky VPN will connect you to the fastest VPN server. Or if you want, you can click here to open the server list and connect to the server you want. For example, let it be Australia in my case. And of course, to disconnect, you need to click on the connection button right here and the connection will be stopped. Kaspersky VPN supports up to 5 simultaneous connections on a single account and this is great for a premium VPN as well as some bonus features inside the app such as news and recommendations that will give you dozens of interesting blog posts to read that aren't necessarily related to cybersecurity. Now let's check the settings menu and by doing so move on to the next section of my Kaspersky VPN test and review, security. When it comes to security, we found Kaspersky VPN to be a mixed bag, like 70% bad and 30% good. Why? Well, for the start, instead of industry standard 256-bit encryption that we get on ExpressVPN or CyberGhost for example, Kaspersky VPN uses 128-bit encryption. Just to make it clear, even this level of encryption is really strong, but of course, 256-bit encryption is even stronger and we simply don't understand why such a powerful online security company didn't go for this option. There's no IPv6 leak protection either, but on the brighter side, there's a kill switch and a so-called smart protection that will automatically enable a VPN when you connect to the insecure VPN networks. So overall, Kaspersky VPN disappointed me in the security department. But what about its privacy policy? Well, this is a long privacy policy, so I'm going to cut it short and pick out the most important bits that you will probably want to hear. The company doesn't have a separate privacy policy for the VPN and its antivirus software, which is even worse because in that case Kaspersky keeps logs of quite a lot of information. As you can see, there's benign information such as product and description information. Then we move on to the next level which is device information such as operating system, device type and so on. The next level is, and pay attention now, much worse. We can see that Kaspersky VPN stores information on installed applications on your device, URLs you visit, operating system events, Wi-Fi connection data, user contact data and so much more. The silver lining is that Kaspersky VPN justified pretty much everything and as always the reasons lie in maintaining and improving the VPN, but even then this is a lot of information stored on Kaspersky's servers which will definitely have an influence on your privacy. Plus Kaspersky processes this information in different countries including China which is known for government surveillance and spying practices. All of this logically makes Kaspersky VPN an unsafe and insecure VPN to use. Moving on with the Kaspersky VPN review, we need to see if this VPN is as fast as it claims to be. What you see on the screen is my native internet speed, so I will use two servers to test Kaspersky VPN and see how big the speed reduction will be. One server will be located in Hungary, which Kaspersky says is the fastest one according to my location, and one in the United States, just to see how well Kaspersky VPN performs in different scenarios. As you can see, I'm already connected to the VPN server in Hungary, so let's revisit the speed test website and initiate the speed test. And we can see that the speeds aren't exactly the greatest. Even though my distance to the server is very small, the reduction in download and upload speed is noticeable and my ping increased to more than 150 milliseconds. Now I'm connected to the server in the United States through Kaspersky VPN, so let's initiate the speed test again and check out the results. 
As anticipated, it's even worse now and my ping skyrocketed while upload and download speeds pretty much hit the rock bottom. To conclude, Kaspersky VPN fails the speed test, offering very slow speeds and high ping that isn't great even for browsing the web, let alone downloading torrents and streaming on Netflix or other platforms. And speaking of streaming, we need to test out if you can enjoy different streaming platforms with Kaspersky VPN. And today we have two of them on the menu, Netflix and BBC iPlayer. For Netflix, I will use the US catalog and I will try to unblock the movie Batman The Killing Joke, which is available only in the United States and I can't find it as you can see, after which I will connect to the UK server and try to watch BBC iPlayer. First, let's connect to the server in the United States and then refresh the page. Surprisingly, Kaspersky VPN works and the movie is right here, but let's see if I can watch it. And as you can see, it works flawlessly, but I'm stopping the footage to prevent any copyright issues. I'm now disconnected from the US server and I will try to watch BBC iPlayer with my real IP address. Clearly, it gives me an error message because I'm not located in the United Kingdom, but let's connect to the server in this country and then refresh the page. Kaspersky VPN surprises once again because the error message isn't here. Let's try to watch this show to confirm that it really works. And yeah, it works flawlessly, but I'm blurring the footage to prevent any copyright issues. So overall, Kaspersky VPN turned out to be a decent VPN for streaming, but unfortunately it's let down by slow speeds and long waiting times that I had to cut out from the video. As is the case with every antivirus based VPN, this one stays vague on how many servers it has and this is something we must go over in our Kaspersky VPN review. While we don't know for sure how many servers it has, we know how many server locations are there. 51, with the addition of several locations in the United States. If this number sounds familiar, this is because NordVPN has servers in 59 countries, so Kaspersky did a great job in this regard. The server distribution is generally decent and there are servers in less popular countries such as Cambodia, Estonia and Vietnam, but also servers in major countries like the US, UK, Canada, Australia and many others. All in all, the server distribution is more than decent, but we would like Kaspersky VPN to be more transparent and present the exact number of servers it has. In my Kaspersky VPN review, I tested out customer support as well, only to find out that it doesn't offer the live chat option, which is baffling given that Avast, McAfee and many other similar VPNs offer this option. Instead, if you're a home user, as I am, you can send an email where the average waiting time is 24 hours and there's remote assistance as well, for which, as you can see, you need to pay 20 bucks. That being said, if you want to fix the potential issue with Kaspersky VPN today, well, you'll have to leave that issue for tomorrow and possibly the day after just in case the waiting time extends. And now we've come to the price of Kaspersky VPN. We can see that the VPN offers three plans, out of which one is a basic or a free plan and there's a monthly and a yearly plan. The monthly plan costs $4.99 a month, while the annual plan will take $29.99 out of your wallet. If you ask me, these are pretty affordable prices, but not for a VPN of this caliber that disappoints in many cases. On the brighter side, it has a 30 day money back guarantee for all products, including this VPN, so you can get your money back in case you don't like it. Instead of spending money on Kaspersky VPN, we advise going for CyberGhost, a VPN that will cost you even less depending on the plan you go for, yet it will give you 7000 plus servers in 90 countries, much faster speeds, better security, a no logging policy, a 45 day money back guarantee and 7 simultaneous connections on a single account. Or perhaps you can claim a 49% discount and 3 months free for the annual plan on ExpressVPN instead. This is a bit more expensive provider but it's better even than CyberGhost. You'll get 3000 servers in 94 countries, the fastest speeds on the market, P2P friendly servers, the ability to unblock dozens of Netflix catalogs and reliable 24-7 live chat support. I left links to both ExpressVPN and CyberGhost in the description below, so if you're interested, check them out and claim special discounts on long-term plans on both VPNs. To conclude my Kaspersky VPN test and review, I must tell you whether or not to buy this VPN and the answer is pretty simple, no. Kaspersky VPN simply isn't safe and secure, it has terrible speeds, has no 24-7 support and app support could be better. 
Sure, it's quite easy to use, works with Netflix and gives you more than 50 server locations, but that's not enough to be better than ExpressVPN or CyberGhost that represent much better alternatives and a better value for the money. After all, there's nothing to lose in testing them out, given that both ExpressVPN and CyberGhost have a money-back guarantee in place, letting you get your money back in no time. With everything said, this was all for today's video, we hope you liked it, and if you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to our channel and stay with us because many more VPN reviews like this are coming very soon. See you in the next video, bye!